And today we're taking a look at the Lenovo ThinkPad X230 laptop for use in 2024 and onward. I did install a new third-party keyboard which operates perfectly fine, however it is slightly different than the OEM keyboard that shipped with this laptop, but honestly for myself personally the difference is negligible. I actually miss using this style of touchpad, I find it to be quite responsive and always encouraged me to use the red track point due to its small size. There's also a fingerprint reader that still works. I tried cleaning off these white dots on the LCD display bezel but I had no success so maybe ordering a cheap replacement is in the cards. The standard 720p webcam is just alright. The built-in speakers are okay. Of course, using a nice headset or Bluetooth speaker will greatly enhance that. The right side of the laptop features a 4-in-1 SD card reader, one USB 2.0 always on, RJ45 Ethernet port, a microphone and headphone combo jack, here's the spot where you install the SSD, and the version of the Kensington lock. On the left side, there's an option for an express card reader, a Wi-Fi toggle, USB 3.0, mini display port, VGA, another USB 3.0, and there's the air exhaust for the CPU fan. The bottom of the laptop features a port for a docking station. There's some air intake for the CPU fan and some passive air cooling here. Two grills for the speakers. So now I'll show you how to open up the laptop and access some upgrades. What you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver, but first we'll start by removing the battery. And just like that, here's the area to access RAM upgrades. And as I stated before, currently I have 16 gigabytes of 1600 megahertz RAM installed. And this is a brand called Cusini, which is lesser known, but I do notice that they use SK Hynix RAM chips. So in my mind, that's about as effective as buying SK Hynix itself. Now to access other areas for upgrades, you don't have to remove all the screws, just the ones holding in the palm rest and keyboard. Now that the screws are removed, you can use a tool similar to this one to gently lift up on the keyboard. And there's just one ribbon cable to detach from the motherboard. And here's a ribbon cable connection from the touchpad to the motherboard that you can also remove. And I usually just gently lift up on the palm rest to remove it. Now with the palm rest off, there's some easily accessible upgrades and cable connections should you need to access them. Over here is the Wi-Fi card and over here is the Bluetooth card. Back when the X230 was manufactured, these two were separate entities. Here's the CMOS battery connected to the motherboard right here. And here's the cable connection for the speakers. And right here is a port for a WWAN card, which you can also install a mSATA solid state drive. In the past, I've done things like install Windows onto the mSATA SSD and install an additional hard drive or, or SSD into the 2.5 inch bay. But one thing to note is that the mSATA SSD port does only support SATA 2 speeds. However, I didn't really find a big performance dip if used only as a boot drive. Either way, it's kind of a fun option and you could also use this port for extra storage or as a cache. And for reference, this is where you access the 2.5 inch bay. So I've got my Steam library loaded up on my NVMe solid state drive adapter and that's plugged into a USB 3.0 port and I've got a mouse attached too. Unfortunately, since there's no HDMI port on this laptop, I can't connect my capture card on my workstation. I've already tried out an HDMI to VGA adapter and though it did record, the footage was very choppy and the frames per second was all off. Unfortunately, I don't have an HDMI to mini display port adapter, so we're just going to record the screen today. So it's not as pretty as a game capture, but it'll do. So here we have Portal 2 lined up.
For general use and even as a daily driver laptop for work, the X230 is still very useful and performs quite well. Watch tons of high definition video on YouTube, Netflix, etc. And as long as your internet connection is stable and fast, you can get to surfing the web quite fast and efficiently. And I currently have Office 2021 installed and it works perfectly fine. Uh, you can also use something like Office 365 quite easily. For my personal day job, I could use this laptop easily as I generally just use computers to access emails and do some research on the web. So if you're just using a laptop for general use, maybe some work, maybe some programming, stuff like that, I would definitely recommend the X230 if it's the right price. I certainly wouldn't overpay for it, but I'm pretty sure you can search online and find one for a pretty good bargain. I'm even tempted to use this one as a daily driver just to see how it goes, but I think I already have somebody lined up to buy it. So thanks a lot for watching and hopefully this video helps you decide if an X230 is fit for you in 2024. Have a great day.